Hi everyone, it's Miss Kristen with Oak Brook Public Library and we're back for our virtual story time. This week's theme is what pet would you get? I love pets and I can't wait to share some cool pet stories with you all. Let's get started with our first book, Children Make Terrible Pets by Peter Brown. This book is being read with permission from Little Brown Books for Young Readers. One morning, Lucy was practicing her twirls when she noticed she was being watched. Hello, who's there? I can smell you behind those bushes, so just come on out. Squeak. When her secret admirer scurried into the open, Lucy could not believe her eyes. Oh my gosh, you are the cutest critter in the whole forest. Squeak. So Lucy brought the critter home to show her mom. Mom, look what I found outside. I call him Squeaker because he makes funny sounds. Squeak. See, isn't he the cutest? Can I keep him please? That might sound familiar to any of you who have ever found a little critter outside that you'd like to keep as a pet. Lucille Beatrice Bear, don't you know that children make terrible pets? Aw, come on, Mom. Look how sweet he is. You won't be any trouble, will you, boy? Squeak. Oh, all right. You can keep him on one condition. Squeaker is your responsibility. I will not take care of him for you. Thanks, Mom. Squeaker is going to be the best pet ever. You'll see. Lucy and Squeaker were inseparable. They played together. They ate together. They napped together. Aww. Some of you might have a little pet at home that likes to take a nap with you. Lucy and Squeaker did everything together. But it wasn't all fun and games. He was impossible to potty train. Squeak. He ruined the furniture. Squeak. He caused problems wherever he went. We don't throw food at tea parties. Squeak. And just when Lucy thought things couldn't get any worse, Squeaker disappeared. Squeaker? Here, Squeaker? Come here, boy. Squeaker? Lucy checked the usual hiding spots, but her pet was nowhere to be found. Squeaker, where are you? <laughs> Lucy had almost given up hope when her sensitive nose caught a whiff of her squeaker. Lucy followed Squeaker's scent this way and that across the entire forest until finally she found Squeaker. But something had changed. Squeaker didn't seem like a pet anymore. Lucy knew what she had to do. See, Squeaker is now with his family. Goodbye, Squeaker. Squeak. Lucy had a lot to think about on her walk home. I'm really gonna miss that little fella. Squeaker belongs with his family. I guess some critters just aren't meant to be pets. Maybe it's all for the best. By the end of the day, Lucy had learned one very valuable lesson. You were right, Mom. Children do make terrible pets. They really are the worst. The end. Who did Lucy find for, as her next pet? 
a big giant elephant. Ah, love it. I like that book because it's funny to think of an animal as having a human as a pet. Do any of your pets treat you like they're the ones in charge? I certainly know a dog that acts that way toward me. I also like that this book teaches a lesson. Whether human or animal, it's super important that we let creatures live in their natural habitats, even if we would really like to keep them as pets. Our next book is about a really interesting type of pet. And we're gonna learn all about it. It's called My Tiny Pet by Jesse Hartland. And we're reading this book today with permission from Penguin Random House Publishers. Once upon a time, not so very long ago, I lived in a ginormous house on a tall hill in a big noisy town. We had six poodles, 10 cats, a tarantula, two snakes, three hedgehogs, 10 mice, countless birds, several saltwater tanks with hundreds of fish, an octopus, three rabbits, a pony, a pig, a goat, and a trio of turtles. Look at all those pets. This would be a really cool picture to look at as you read and look close and see if you can find all the different pets that she names. A few pets later, mom walked in the door and said, simplify. And dad said, downsize. Downsize means that they're going to move into a smaller house. I was sad, but all the pets went to good homes. And that's really important, friends. If you have a pet that you can't take care of, it's best if you just find it a good home to go to instead. Now, we live in a tiny house. We like the simple life in the woods. Time to read, time to draw, time to daydream. All is good, except I really want a pet. Just one. No, no. Then I learned something exciting in science that gives me an idea. So I bring up the pet subject again at dinner. What if the pet is smaller than a teacup poodle? No. What if it's smaller than a mouse? No. What if it's smaller than the eye of an ant? Smaller than the eye of an ant? My parents have a lot of questions. Well, would it need a special bed? No. Toys? Nope. Does it need walking and grooming? No. Special food? No. I don't mention that I'll need a microscope to look at it. The next day, I take my parents for a walk in the woods and tell them, you find these animals living in moss. What is it? It's a kind of bear, I tell them. A bear? Bears are big. Not this bear, I said. This bear is tiny. Look, this is a tardigrade, also called a water bear. Really? That's it? My parents ask. Now that is small. At home, I show it to them magnified 300 times. And this is actually what they look like if you look at them under a microscope. It's perfect, I tell them. But they still have another question. How big does it get? Here they are imagining that it's gonna grow into a full-size bear, but not to worry. It will always be small, I tell them and it does not sting. It does not shed, it does not bite, it does not bark. If you forget to feed and water it, it's okay. Water bears can go without food for 10, food and water for 10 years. Okay. They can take extreme heat and extreme cold 
and it will always be small. Okay. Wait, did you say okay? Yay! And having a tiny pet has so many advantages. I can take my water bear with me wherever I go. I can take it here, I can take it there, I can take it anywhere. So everything is great until one day I hear something familiar. Dad says, simplify, and mom says, downsize. But it's okay. I know that no matter how small we go, there will always be room for my tiny pet. And this picture right here is an actual picture of a water bear as seen through a microscope. So let me read you just a few fun facts. They are the first known animal to survive in outer space. They can swim in boiling water and they shrivel into a blob when life conditions become threatening, but can later come alive again. This is called cryptobiosis. Well, that's a cool new word. And what a cool, unique pet. Oh, I love learning about that. So now that we've learned some things about pets, we're gonna play a game called Good Pet, Not So Good Pet, and I'm gonna show you how. So for today's game, we're going to play Good Pet, Not So Good Pet. It's a really fun, easy, and very silly game. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a picture of an animal and if you think that animal makes a good pet, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you think to yourself, mm, that's a cool animal, but probably not a good pet, just go ahead and give me a thumbs down. That's your way of saying, um, I don't want that animal to be in my house as my pet. Okay, so let's start with, what's our first animal here? Oh, a cat. Hmm, what do you all think? This one's kind of easy. Thumbs up? That's right, thumbs up. It's a good pet. A cat is a really good pet to have. In fact, some of you probably have a cat as a pet. All right, our next animal is a bunny. What do you think about this one? Does a bunny make a good pet? Yeah, give me a thumbs up for that one. A bunny is a really good pet. Definitely. All right, our next animal is, uh-oh. A shark? Should we have a shark as a pet? What do you think? Thumbs up? No, thumbs down. A shark would not make a good pet. Super cool animal? Definitely not something you want as a pet. You guys getting the hang of it? All right, let's keep going. Ooh, our next animal is a big hippo. What do we think? Is it a good pet? or maybe not such a good pet to have in your house. That's right, it's a thumbs down. Still a cool animal, but not something that we would want to have as a pet. All right, how about our next one? A little turtle. Hmm, what do you think? Show me thumbs up or thumbs down. That's right, it's a thumbs up. A turtle makes a great pet. There we go. Oh, how about this one? This is kind of a unique pet. Do any of you know anyone that has a guinea pig as a pet? That's a little bit of a hint. Let's see. That's right, it's a thumbs up. A guinea pig does make a great pet. Lots of people have guinea pigs as pets, but they're still pretty unique and cool. All right, oh, this next one is scary. A crocodile? Should we have a crocodile as a pet? I don't think so. Let me see that thumbs down. Crocodiles are awesome animals, but they are definitely animals that need to live in their natural habitats, not in your house. Ooh, this one is cool. A polar bear. Hmm, what do you think? Polar bear is not the same as a water bear like we learned about earlier. It's much, much bigger and much more ferocious. That's right, polar bear, thumbs down. It's a cool animal, but definitely we do not want it as a pet. All right. Oh, this is a cool one. How about a fish? 
There's a little hint for this one too. If you've been in the library, maybe you've seen our pet fish here at the library in their tank. That's right, it's a thumbs up. Fish make great pets and we know that firsthand because we have them as our pets here at the library. Just a couple left here. Oh, I love this animal, buffalo. What do you think? Should I get a buffalo as a pet? No, that's super silly. Thumbs down, buffaloes are giant, furry, stinky animals, and I love them, but I do not want one living in my house. Ooh, how about this one? A giraffe, what do we think? I think you all know by now. This one's a thumbs down. It's a cool animal though, but way too tall. I don't think a giraffe would even fit in my house. It's so tall. So that one is a not so good pet. All right, let's find out what's our last one. A puppy. Hmm, I think you all know this one. Give me a big thumbs up for a puppy. That's right. A puppy makes a good pet. You all did a fantastic job. Thanks for playing along with me. The last book we're going to read today is about a pet some of you may have. This story is called Can I Be Your Dog by Troy Cummings. It's being read with permission by Penguin Random House Publishing. And this is one of our monarch books this year. So come into the library and look for it. Dear people at Yellow House, woof, can I be your dog? I am potty trained and I have my own squeaky bone. Also, I love to play. I see you have a cat, but I'm willing to work with you. Who's a good dog? I am, sincerely, Arfie. P.S. I know every house on Butternut Street, but I asked you first. Dear Arfie, we're so sorry, but you cannot be our dog. Our cat is, um, allergic to dogs. Good luck in your search, the Honeywells. Aw, poor Arfie, he's a little disappointed. He'll try again. Dear Butcher Lady, can I be your dog? I think your butcher shop would be a great place for a puppy like me. I could keep the floor nice and clean, Arfie. Look, pal, I've got a bone to pick with you. Last time I let a dog into my shop, a dozen meatballs went missing. Sorry, but there's no way I'm taking in a pooch. Veronica Shank, butcher. P.S. No hard feelings. Enjoy these dried giblets and good luck finding a home. Nom, nom, nom. Dear Fire Station Number Five, can I be your dog? I can fetch your boots. Plus, let's just say I know my way around a fire hydrant. I've sniffed out every single one on Butternut Street. And yours is the shiniest. Arfie. Dear applicant, thank you for your interest in working with the Butternut Street Fire Station. Unfortunately, the position of fire dog has already been filled. We will keep your letter on file. Best wishes in your search. Station number five. Dear junkyard guy, I'm not gonna lie, you're my next to last choice, but these past few days have been rough. Rough, rough, rough. So please, can I be your dog? I don't eat much, and I can bark if people try to steal your junk and stuff. Hopefully yours, Arfie. Dear Mutt, get lost. Aw, poor Arfie. Dear Last House on Butternut Street, can I be your dog? I see that your yard is full of weeds and your windows are broken and there's a funny smell, but I'm not picky. Just lonely, Arfie. Lonely, 
Return to sender. Nobody at this address. Aww, Arfie's super sad. He just wants a family of his own. Now look, when he wakes up the next morning, there's a letter taped to his cardboard box and it says, to Arfie. Hmm. Dear Arfie, can I be your person? I need a friend who will be with me no matter what. Snow, rain, heat, or gloom of night. And I see that you already know everyone on Butternut Street. I know you'll make a first class partner. With hugs and head scratches, Mitzi Whipple, letter carrier. P.S. If you agree, meet me at the big blue mailbox. So here's Mitzi. She's waiting to see if Arfie will agree to be her dog. What do you think? <gasps> Here comes Arfie bounding down the street to greet his new person, Mitzi. That is the sweetest. Dear Mitzi, you know what? My tail has been wagging ever since I got your note. My answer is yes. Truly yours, Arfie. P.S. Woof. Scritch scratch. The end. Oh, I love that story. So I'm going to read you a couple things here at the end of the book that um, are some facts about adopting animals and how you can help a homeless animal, somebody that needs a family. So you can adopt a shelter animal instead of buying a pet. You can volunteer at a shelter or a pet adoption event. You can spay or neuter your pet so there will be fewer fur babies to find a home for. And you can donate to your local animal shelter or a national animal advocacy group. That's the name of a group of people that help animals, such as the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, that's called the ASPCA, or the Humane Society. Extend a helpful paw so all our animal friends can find forever homes. Oh, I am so happy that Arfie found his person. There are lots of animals that need good homes, so if you and your family are looking for a pet, please try to adopt an animal from a local shelter. If you're looking for an animal shelter nearby, try Hinsdale Humane Society in Hinsdale or Catnap in LaGrange Park. Friends, because we have so many pet books here in the library, story time isn't nearly long enough for me to read all of them to you. So if you're interested in other books about pets or animals, please stop by the youth desk and ask your friendly librarians. You might even want to stop by when you come in and pick up your take and make craft. And speaking of crafts, today we're going to make our own pets as our crafts. And because Pet Week is so special, you actually get two pet crafts this week. And look carefully in your bag because there might be some extra surprises in there. Let me show you how to make our pet craft. So as I mentioned, today you're going to be getting two different pet crafts um, when you come to pick up your take and make craft from the library. So I already made one. This is the take and make puppy craft. And it's super easy to do, but it's really fun as well. So you're going to get a page that looks like this in your bag, and you're going to color your puppy parts however you want. As you can see, I did this one in colored pencil. And although I've never seen a blue dog before, I made my dog blue because it's just for fun. So you can do any colors that you want. Once you have colored your puppy, you're going to cut out all your parts and then you're just going to simply put the puppy together. So since I've already put the puppy together, I'm actually gonna show you the demonstration of it using your other craft that you're gonna get in your bag and that's the build a kitty. So for this one, I actually did this one in marker just because I wanted to show you it works either way. You can use whatever coloring supplies you have. You can use any colors that you want. And then you just start gluing your pieces together. You kind of build on top of the other pieces. So the first thing I did was glued the head onto the body. And then I glued on these side legs 
which would be the cat's back legs, and they go out to the side, and then I glued on her front legs. Oops. Yours will be nice and neat once you have all your glue on there, and it'll be all set. Then, once you have your legs on and they've been glued and they're dry, you can add your collar, and then you can just flip your cat over and glue on the tail. So you wanna do basically the same thing with your puppy and your kitten craft. And just have fun with it. Choose whatever colors you want um, and just make it look really unique and you. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our virtual program. Please don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you'd like to reach out and show us the awesome crafts you've been making, go ahead and leave us a comment. We would love to see what you've made. See you next time.